Hello, Anoka High School students, uh, photography students. Uh, my name is Sarah Phillippe, and I am owner and uh, artist of Sarah Grace Photography. And I'm honored to be here with you guys today and give you a little video about um, my business. So, as I mentioned, my name is Sarah Phillippe, and I've been in business, registered with the Secretary of State for uh, 10 years. Uh, it was 10 years last fall, so going on 11 years. Um, but I just wanted to uh, show you guys a little bit about um, what I have and explain a little bit about what's important with photography um, and a little bit about the gear, um, some lighting, some modifiers, and also some um, cell phone photography tips because um, I know that those are the phones that we all have on us every day. Um, so I'll start a little bit right now with, um, I'm just going to move this down so you can see a little bit, um, with my gear. So first of, all, um, first of all, I have a couple of cameras. So these are mirrorless uh, Sony cameras and I have um, one camera as a backup because I do shoot um, weddings and so it's always important to have a backup camera if your main guy isn't working. Um, and always good to have backup batteries as well as uh, memory cards as well. And one thing I wanted to talk about um, today was the actual lenses. And so with the, with the lenses, even though I have a Sony camera, I have uh, one Sony lens, one or two Sony lenses. Um, I have Tamron lenses. I have, um, what are the other ones? I'm totally blanking on the other lenses that I owe, Sigma lenses. Um, it just kind of whatever fits that, um, that empty spot for the lens that I need or the focal length that I need um, with my with my gear, um, with what I already have. So I try to reduce the amount of gear that I buy um, to make use of what I already have. And so when I first got my Sony's, I was shooting all Canon. And so what I did was I bought a converter from that would convert my um, my lenses to work with my my. My Canon lenses to work with my Sony camera um, body and so I used that converter for a long time because I didn't have enough money or didn't actually want to make the complete switch um, and I was still shooting with a backup camera that was um, Canon as well so I was using both gears um, so your brain has to work a little bit harder when you're doing that but um, it does force you to kind of um, to think about what you're doing and how you're doing it um, and the camera functions and your memory your muscle memory works differently too because all the buttons on the back of the camera are different as well as the settings and the functions uh, within the camera so uh, uh, this little guy right here is just uh, something that goes on the back of the viewfinder so I have a semi-large nose <laughs> and so um, this just helps me like when I put my eye up to the camera my nose doesn't hit the, here, maybe I'll turn this so you guys can see better. So when I put my, my eye, this just extends the eyepiece out from the back of the viewfinder. And so my nose isn't hitting um, the screen back here and smudging it all up or, or anything. So instead of, you know, like pushing your face against um, the viewfinder, you just snap this in. These are 20 bucks, best thing I ever did. And then you, it can flip flop back and forth depending on your dominant eye. And then you can hold it up to your eye and you can see that, hopefully you can see that, um, there's a little bit of distance between my cheek, my nose, and the back of the camera. So, And then it just, with this, um, this extra material on the side of this eyepiece, it's flexible, so that's really nice. So it flexes kind of where, however, sh whatever shape your face is, um, but it also helps in covering up all that peripheral light that might be coming in. Because a lot of times before I had this guy, um, I would shoot without it, and when I would do landscapes, I would, and I'm outside and it's really sunny, I would find myself holding my hand um, over my eyepiece so that I could, kind of like this, um, so that I could get better view of what I was shooting through the, through the, through the lens. Um, and so that's how that guy works. Uh, be careful though, because a lot of times when you're carrying these, they can kind of get caught on your clothes and they can just whoosh, leave. This is my second one I bought, third, fourth. <laughs> Anyways, um, so that's my, my gear, a little bit about that. Um, a little bit about my, about my lighting gear. Um, I have several of these guys. These are still um, Canons I'm using with my Sony stuff. Um, surprise, they work. <laughs> um, my 
my uh, triggers are still working and so you have to jimmy them a little bit um, but there is always usually a way to alleviate purchasing more gear because gear can get really expensive um, and I know that when you're starting out it's it's a struggle because you don't want to buy all that gear you don't have the money to buy all the gear um, you don't know how to use all the gear and so one thing that I would suggest and I don't know kind of where you guys are at with your process on this but one thing I would suggest is to simply use the gear that you've got um, and master that master that lens master that flash master that um, that camera body um, and be comfortable with it. Make sure that it's like a and it's an appendage to you um, Kind of like a second a second finger third fourth sixth finger <laughs> um, So you can know how to use it inside and out and it just becomes muscle memory how you're you know You're controlling functions. You don't have to look at the back of your camera to do that um, Anyway, so yeah back to the lighting. <clears throat> this is my speed light. So I have a four. I used to have a 480 I think I might still have a 480 um, you can use the different um, versions. So this is a 580 EX2. Um, so you can use different versions um, of, of the speed lights. Um, they're fun to, you know, if you're just starting out to use them, just use them on, they have this ETTL. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to get it close. I don't know if it'll work. See, it says ETTL. It's hard to do this backwards, right up there. Um, so if you use the ETTL, uh, that will allow you, it just, it's kind of like it's automatic, kind of putting your, your camera on automatic. Um, otherwise, if you switch the mode to M, I don't know if you can see that little M down there. So that means manual. Maybe I'll switch the light over here. There, now you can see it. So it's manual. Um, and what that means is you can control the output of the light, um, the strength of the light. Um, so that's a uh, lighting on um, these guys is a whole nother ball of wax all in and of itself. Um, one other, uh, the speed lights I wanted to mention are lightweight. Um, they're, they're spendy. Um, I bought some of mine used. You can look on Craigslist, uh, Facebook Marketplace, um, eBay, uh, also a lot of the vendors. Um, so like Adorama, uh, b and um, any type of a photography vendor will be able to will sell these and new and they'll also probably sell them used as well Amazon probably sells them new and used as well um, so hey if they're used and they're working all you gotta do is buy batteries right what's cheaper than that um, another thing I wanted to show you guys was um, I just picked this guy up uh, not too long ago so this is um, a all metal frame and LED light and so this is a constant light so there's no flash with this so once this is plugged in you don't have to sync it to your camera you don't have to do anything let's see if I turn it on is it turning on no it's not charged yet oops oh there we go Woo, that's bright I just blinded myself <laughs> So this is another light. So it's LED, so it can kind of, you can kind of see it controlling it. Um, you can control the strength of the light, how much the output is, um, that sort of thing. Um, but anyways, yeah, this has also got attachments for the front um, so that what you can do is, you know, it's got barn doors, it's got grid, um, a bunch of different stuff. But I got this metal guy because I'm very clumsy and... Um, Photographers, we tend to drop things a lot or things fall over or the wind takes them, that sort of thing. So um, I got the old metal casing, so that will hopefully, hopefully help me as long as well as my um, insurance policy. <laughs> um, so another tip about lighting. Um, one thing you can use for lighting uh, that doesn't involve an actual light is a beautiful thing called a reflector. So if you've got the sun or if you've got a lamp, um, you can't see this, maybe I'll bring it up over here. I have a lamp shining on me um, over here. I also have a little light right here on my office desk. Um, I'm using these to light myself. So even if you've got these things laying around the house, you can use those. Um, the color temperatures may different. I don't know how far you're at with the color temperature information, but um, color temperature in photography life is a little bit different than color temperature in real life. So I learned that um, my husband is in the electrical industry. And so for him, color temperature uh, is measured the same way as it is in photography with um, kind of cool temperatures to warm temperatures, right? And it's measured in Kelvin degrees. And so 
the color temperature at um, in real life at uh, like 2700 is going to be really warm whereas in the photography world a color temperature of 2700 is like super blue and so more of a cold feeling um, whereas in the real world a color temperature of like 8000 um, is really cool so it's kind of it's kind of flop flip flopped it's the opposite um, from real life in photography life and so a color temperature in Photography life at 8,000 or 15,000 is super warm, right? And so it's uh, more on oranges and blues and yellows, um, not blues, oranges and yellows and um, I forgot the other color, reds maybe. <laughs> um, but anyways, color temperature. So that's a little bit about that. So this is a reflector. This is a five-in-one reflector. So you can see right now it's got two sides, a black side. So what black does is it cuts the light. So there's on the other side of this, there is a natural light window facing the north um, so it cuts the light so you can see what that looks like the other side of this is a um, silver so this reflects light okay so now I'm cutting out I don't want to cut out my other light but you can see it's reflecting light so this is reflecting you can see the light over here it's reflecting light from the sky on my computer desk and it's also reflecting the light from the window over here um, so it's reflecting onto here, coming back at me. So it's filling is what they call it. It's like a fill light. So it's filling in all those shadows on the side of my face, right? So I take it away and you see my cheekbones bones are a little bit more um, defined because the light is not shining there. It's not filling in those shadows. Um, so this one opens up. Apparently my zipper broke or it's just stuck underneath there. Um, this opens up, let's see if I can get that fixed. This guy opens up, um, so it's five in one, so remember it's got the black, the silver, and then it opens up to a sheer white, so this is like a shoot through, okay? So you can put this in front of your light source and it just kind of diffuses the light a little bit, makes it a little bit softer. You can use it with the sun, you can use it with an actual um, lamp or light, um, light source that you have. This also has a gold side, so much like the silver reflector, but this is gonna give you a little bit more warmer tone, a warmer color tone. Um, and then it's just got the sheer white. Um, and so if you don't want the light to come through, if you just want it to bounce off the light, um, you've got that as well. So this is a really great buy, this reflector. Um, I don't know, it's probably maybe 30 bucks, 30, 40 bucks. Um, again, you can find these used. There's always people selling off photography gear um, and equipment um, online. So you, there's plenty of stuff that you can get for free um, or not free, but lower cost than brand new. Um, and it's a great way to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Another thing you can do to um, use for, for lighting is if you're shooting portraits or something like that, or if you just want to cut the light, you can use just a basic piece of black um, cardboard or styrofoam or sty styrene. I believe it's called styrene board. Um, so it's got a little bit of styrofoam like in the middle. Um, and this just, again, kind of cuts the light. Ooh, gives me a really orange too, tone too, especially with these really weird lights I have going on up here. But um, and then it kind of goes back to, so your cam, the camera in my um, computer is, I don't have any control over it. So it's, it's adjusting based on the colors that are coming at it, right? And the color temperature of the light sources. So I've got three different light sources. I've got um, one kind of like a floor, not a flu fluorescent bulb um, that's shining at me at, um, 75 watts <laughs> um, and this lamp on my desk which is supposed to simulate sunlight um, so a little bit warmer and then the actual light from the outside um, which is um, probably neutral daylight so maybe somewhere around 2400 2300 um, and then you know just different so your 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 camera in the in the computer is adjusting just like just like your camera in your camera the um, sensor in your camera will adjust with the lighting if you don't change the color temperature within your control panels. Okay, um, some fun things with lighting. Filters. Um, I used, I played around with, so this is a red filter. I'll hold it over here so you can see it a little bit better. Um, so this is a red filter um, that you can put on the end of your 
of your lens and it kind of um, makes everything a little wonky. Um, red, yellow, um, a whole bunch of different ones. I may have a neutral density filter filter on here. Actually, this is a this which one this is. So they just kind of screw on the top of your lens. Oh, I think this is the circular polarizer. Um, so this is a, a circular polarizer. So you can kind of see, like, if I hold my hand behind it, it's just like it's it's a little dark. And so what that does is it cuts glare, the circular polarizer. And so um, it cuts glare on water, um, glass, anything that's kind of like reflective. Um, it'll cut that glare so you can see the image a little bit clearer. So with water, if the image, if the water is clear, you'll be able to see down into the water um, with the with the polarizer. They have neutral density filters, which are what they do is they reduce the amount of light coming into the lens to hit the sensor. And so what that does is it brings your stop down in the camera several stops depending on the density. Um, of the filter that you get. So I think I have one that brings uh, that my neutral my neutral density filter brings it down. I think it's like 10 stops. So it's really, really dark. Um, the filter itself. Um, so you can't really um, it's almost like looking through a pair of really, really dark sunglasses, right? And when you put that on the front of your lens, your camera isn't really able to see anything. And so it's really built for if you're gonna take shoot during the day, on a bright sunny day if you're going to shoot um, into water or something like that or even just a landscape um, it's meant to be used with a, a timed exposure a long exposure um, so that when you've got that um, that shutter open for so long it will make stuff a little like it makes water kind of flow and gives you that nice soft look um, but it also stops everything down so it gives you the sway like if you've got um, some weeds or some some branches or trees, um, some wild grasses. Um, it'll kind of give you that sway and that that feel of movement. Um, so those are the neutral density filters. Um, one thing I always like to tell um, photography students is to there's there's one thing that you always want to have on you <laughs> with your camera, and that is your manual. Um, this manual is falling apart. <laughs> um, this has been taped several times. I don't know if you can see that, but there's literally like, this is the whole cover is covered in tape. Um, and it's, I, I use this a lot. Um, I think it's really important for you to read your manual when you get your camera. Even if you know what a camera does, it's always f fun. I say it's fun. Um, I find it, fun, it's educational, it's inspirational to read your manual, to understand what your camera is capable of. Um, because when you need your manual is when you're out in the field shooting, right? You're not going to need your manual when you're sitting on the couch or in your office where you would leave it, right? You need it when you're using your camera. And when you're using your camera, um, you're usually not at home. And so you want to just leave this bad boy in your camera bag with you. Um, highlight it, put flags on it, mark it up. Um, read through it just to so you at least know what's what your camera is capable of and then if you have a question or something comes up and you're in the field and you need a troubleshoot or you're like oh I know my camera does has this function but I don't know how to I don't remember how to use it at least you know it's got the function right and now you know that you can always look up how to use it right so there's that um, so I always bring my camera manual as well as my flash manual uh, with me everywhere I go um, another tool that's super helpful um, are these, these, work out with these guys, um, these are just big clamps, right? And so you can find these, any industrial store, I probably picked these up for like a buck at, uh, I don't know, Made in China. Um, <laughs> these are really good for holding backdrops. Um, they can hold your, your boards up, you know, you can clamp them to something um, to hold it up. They can hold up your reflector, um, just clamp it onto something, clamp it onto a, a light stand or, you know, whatever you've got available, um, a bookcase, whatever. So these guys are super helpful. Um, it's also helpful for, clo for clothes. Um, they have smaller ones you can get, but you can clamp them like if people's clothes are too big, you can clamp them in the back. So then it kind of like gives you a more slovet look in the front. 
um, less baggy, saggy, all that good stuff. Um, another fun tool are these little strings of uh, LED lights. So these guys, you've all seen these, they kind of like light up. This light's really bad. I don't know, why. maybe I've got too much light going on here. <laughs> these light up. Anyways, these are fun to play with. You can um, kind of like wrap them around like the edge of your lens to give it a cool flare look. Um, or you can have it, you know, your subject holding them, um, wrap them around your subject. So you can do all sorts of fun stuff with these guys. Um, these are super cheap too. They're like, I don't know, 10 bucks. Anywhere you go, five bucks. Um, with lighting um, comes modifiers, right? And so I was told that you guys are interested in some household items that you could use as modifiers. So one thing that um, I would look for when you're looking for lighting modifiers is anything that's got um, any sort of pattern or hole, you know, like pattern with holes in it, right? So one thing I found was my fruit basket, right? So if you put your, if you, you know, flash your, put your flash behind this fruit basket or even like a laundry basket, right? Some of those, one of those big um, rectangular um, laundry baskets. If you get one of those, um, you can put the, you know, set the light up inside of there. Um, to shoot through it um, and then just have it flash and just see what comes out the other side, right? So with this, depending on, and also depending on how close the modifier is to your light source, um, will depend on what that output looks like, right? So um, just play with it. It's kind of fun stuff. You can just, you know, whether it's lines or holes or dots or um, see-through fabric, you know, the lights, it doesn't matter. You can use anything. Um, you could even use a little CD, right? You could shoot through a CD. Um, some of the, or uh, shoot, well, you could shoot through the CD, but you can also put your um, put your flash through and it will kind of like filter that light out, right? So with the filter, the light that comes out through the other side is gonna be very circular, right? And the closer it is, the more powerful that, that edge is gonna be, right? The farther away, it's you're gonna lose some light on the edges here. Um, and then, however close that light source is and the output to your subject will depend on what that um, that pattern looks like in the end too. Okay, I rambled on enough. So the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is uh, cell phone photography. So um, a couple things to think about with your cell phone. I forgot mine, it's um, on the charger. I was gonna have it here to show you, but I don't. Um, so with your cell phone uh, and cell phone photography, um, many times you can keep that grid. I'm sure you guys have learned of the rule of thirds. Um, if you have not, let me quick draw this out for you. Um, so the rule of thirds is the idea that, you know, you've got your, your view, oh, that's a terrible picture. You've got your viewfinder and you're, can I do this again? You're gonna split your viewfinder, which is a square box, um, into three parts. Vertically and three parts diagonally. I'm sorry, vertically and horizontally. Don't look at the top one. Look at this this one right here. <laughs> so this is the rule of thirds, and the idea is that you always want your subject matter into one of these intersecting lines, inter um, as it's going to make your your image a little bit stronger, a little bit more powerful. Um, I will. I was just looking at my calendar behind me, so. As you can see with the calendar behind me, I didn't, um, I framed it up uh, with the, just pull it off the wall here and show you. So I framed it up with um, with the leaves and the branches, but then I put my, my subject a little off center, right? And so every time that you put your subject a little bit more off center, it's gonna create more visual interest for your eye and for your brain. Um, let me see if I have better examples here and just larger one that I can show you. Um, so, well, I want to show you this one because <laughs> this one's a little bit interesting because the subject is dead center, right? It's right in the middle. But if you look at the horizon line, okay, the horizon line is way down here, right? And that's what they say if you're doing landscape photography, you don't want your horizon line directly in the center you want it down, below, or above, okay? You'd never want it directly in the middle because it makes for a boring image. Um, so there's, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little guy in a 
like right there. I'm doing everything backwards, so wherever my finger goes, it goes backwards. Um, anyways, so those are just some of the ideas with the rule of thirds. With the rule of thirds, you can typically um, get that grid line that looks like this um, on your camera phone, okay? So it'll show up on your screen. Um, so it will visually help you kind of direct where you want to put the subject matter. Um, let's see, the other thing with cell phone photography, um, watch the direction of light um, on your subject. So as I mentioned, um, so say if I take this, I have a light um, coming at me right from here. So if I take this light away, you'll see that um, the only light that I have now is this light. And you'll see if I take that one away, I've got one overhead light. Um, and then one side light from the window. So you're gonna see on the side of my face that the side light from the window um, is lighting up this side of my face very clearly, right? And it's getting some hot spots over here, probably because my, my camera on my computer is not that awesome. But the light from above is shining straight down on me, so it's giving rings under my eyes, right? It's making me look like a raccoon. It's making me really dark. If I step back, it starts to fill in some of those shadows. If I look up, it fills in even more shadows and gives me more definition down here. So you can play around with the light that you have. Um, I can even show you, so with this guy, this was just the light that's, this is my happy light, <laughs> that's on my computer desk. So with this light, you can, you can just see, as I move the light around my face, what happens, right? So side light, 45 degrees, Okay, straight in front. Let's see if I can do this. Straight overhead, <laughs> over to the other side, and down below. This is really freaky if you want like a scary movie type of thing going on. So just play with your light source um, and watch where it's coming from, um, even when you're doing cell phone photography, and move your subject. Um, like I said, you don't, depending on the mood that you want to create with the image, um, if you do want the light coming straight down or um, up from up above, um, you can always have fills again. So if I, if we're doing this and I have the light coming from in front of me and I fill from underneath, you see how the light changes on my face, right? It's reflecting from the light on my desk up onto my face, depending on where I put it, right? So um, fun ways to use what you've got. And you don't even need a reflector. You could use... Somebody's wearing a white t-shirt. You could use one of your uh, mom's and dad's dishcloths. <laughs> That'll work too. Um, flash, you know, there's you've always got the flash on your phone. <coughs> Sometimes that flash can do a little bit of blinding. Um, and so you kind of have people doing that uh, when they're when you're actually taking the picture. Um, one thing that I found that works is if you have more than one person, um, you can have the other person. Um, their flashlight on their phone and shine it on you like at a 45 degree angle or wherever you want to put it um, and then have, you know you guys can take the picture if you're doing this uh, selfie um, with your own phone without the flash on um, so that works nice um, and if you got two more, more than one friends you can have two flashes coming at you so play around with that it's fun or you can backlight um, let's see, never, ever, ever zoom your camera um, when, you're, when you're taking a picture with your cell phone. Um, if you zoom in, you will notice, uh, maybe you won't notice when you're taking the picture, but when you zoom in, what happens is those pixels decrease. So you're, you're shooting the same number of pixels, but in a larger area, right? So if you're going to shoot whatever your camera's phone is capable of in that pixel set, you're going to shoot it at this angle, right, or this um, this size. If you're zooming it in, you still have the same number of pixels, right, but you're expanding them. So the pixels are going to become larger. They're going to become more blurry. Um, it's just not going to look like it's crisp. So one thing I always tell um, students is if you're going to use your cell phone to do pictures, um, don't ever zoom it. You can always zoom it post-process, right? So if you're going to edit your edit your pictures afterwards, which we always do, um, you're, you can zoom it in then and it will look just way, way better. Uh, let's see, focus spot. Oh, you always want to make sure to tap the screen to get that focus uh, box to come up. 
Um, I use an Apple iPhone, so I'm not sure what everybody else uses, but I'm pretty sure that most phones are probably similar or the same. Um, to you can focus lock. So if you put your finger on the screen and hold it, it will focus lock that that area, right? So no matter where you move that phone, that it will that little box will stay focused on whatever that is. So if you keep moving your phone screen and somebody's face is right here, it's gonna stay focused on that face, right? Um, so something to keep in mind. <clears throat> uh, let's see, uh-oh, can you guys see me? <laughs> the screen just went to sleep. Um, editing apps, so yes, my editing apps, a couple that I use are, oh, you're gonna make me remember because I don't have my phone on me. What are they? Hmm. I'm gonna have to get back to you on that. <laughs> I can't remember them off the top of my head. Um, there's many of them um, that you can use. I think that you just have to find one that you like. Um, there's so, so many out there. Um, so find one that you like, so find one that's easy for you, that works for you, um, and then use it. Use it, abuse it, move on to the next one. Um, cleaning your lens, yes, your cell phone even has a lens and you should clean it. I'm gonna put this light back on because I look ghastly without it. There we go. <laughs> um, so clean that lens off on the on your camera so it's on the back side and don't use your finger because you're gonna smudge it. Um, use a piece of your clothing, um, use a soft cloth, just whatever. Um, you can even spray some you know, cleaner on it <laughs> before you wipe it off. Uh, that's all I've got for you guys today. Uh, hopefully I haven't talked your ear off and hopefully you learned a little bit something more about photography um, than you already knew. Thanks again. My name is Sarah Phillippe with Sarah Grace Photography and my tagline is, if it's worth a thought, it's worth a shot. Have a great week, you guys. Bye-bye.